Good day, everybody. And we are back again together after taking just a little bit of a break. And um, yeah, so we are back again. So we just wanted to look at the Mpumalanga paper, the prelim paper. We are still continuing to prepare for those final exams. And I hope you've kept yourself quite busy with that. Okay. Uh, yeah, so if you haven't subscribed, please become part of the family. All right. And uh, for those of you who need assistance with either mathematics or physical science, please don't hesitate to, you know, dial that number. OK. And our email address is info at mlungisingosi.co.za. All right. Let's look at this paper from uh, Mpumalanga. Remember, previously we had looked at uh, the Gauteng papers. All right. And I think the second paper, which was uh, also written nationally, uh, but this time we're looking at uh, Mpumalanga. OK, and uh, we're looking at question two based on Newton's laws. Right. So they give us two trolleys there. They say block P with a mass of six kilograms is connected by a light inextensible string. Remember the fact that it's a light inextensible string. First of all, the fact that it's light, it means that it does not add to the total mass of the system. And secondly, that it's inextensible simply means it's not like a, you know, a rubber band or something elastic. Um, so it simply means that the acceleration of the one will, on, will, will be the same as the acceleration of the other, right? Uh, so they say that uh, um, it's they're connected by light inextensible string to block P. Uh, with a mass of 3 kgs, the blocks are initially at rest, okay? Uh, perhaps that might, we might use that, perhaps we might not. It, we'll see as we answer the question. They say force of 200 newtons is applied at an angle of 30 degrees. So there's uh, our force there, 30 degrees, to the horizontal of block Q, while a force of 30 newtons is applied to block P, as shown in uh, to the left rather uh, of block P uh, as shown in the diagram. Now they say the blocks accelerate to the right at 1.5 meters per second squared over a rough horizontal surface, right? So block Q experiences a constant frictional force of 885 newtons. Now, Obviously, uh, in this case, the fact that it's accelerating that way, it's telling us that also the net force or the resultant force must be in the direction of the resultant force, isn't it? Okay, the acceleration rather is in the direction of the resultant force. So they say to us, state Newton's second law in words, of course, we say that uh, if a body experiences a net force, it will accelerate in the direction of the net force. And that acceleration is directly proportional to the net force and inversely proportional to the mass of the object, isn't it? Okay, but uh, there is another way of stating Newton's second law in an easier way. And it simply says that the net force is equal to the rate of change of a body's momentum. Okay, right. So uh, in this case, we simply, um, let's look at 2.2, they say, Draw a labeled free body diagram of block Q. All right, so let's do that quickly. So we're going to have uh, our block Q there. So what do we notice? So first of all, there's a force. There's force F1. So that's the applied force. So I'm going to write that uh, in full. And please remember when you actually, um, uh, you know, draw that free body diagram, when they said a labeled free body diagram, please get into the habit of labeling in full, right? So I know that the tension there will actually be opposing uh, in terms of block Q. So there's our frictional, fo uh, uh, sorry, our tension there. So that's the tension of the string, okay? But uh, we also were told that it experiences a frictional force of 85 newtons. Now, of course, I'm not sure which of those two forces um, is actually bigger than the other. But in this case, I'm just going to draw friction. Actually, I think uh, tension might be bigger than friction. 
okay but um, yeah you wouldn't lose marks for not showing there uh, you know this is not drawn to scale right but what other force do we have i also have because it is sitting on a surface okay i also have the normal force over there okay so that's our normal force over there and in this case ah this is going to interfere with my drawing but i also have gravitational force that is acting vertically downwards okay so you can say the force of gravity there or you can simply say uh, that is uh, the weight of the object now i want you to please note this was out of five marks okay so that is why we actually have uh, five forces there okay so remember that the number of marks that you have actually show you uh, the number of forces that you can draw if you want you can show that uh, this force is actually at an angle of 30 degrees as well all right so there's our free body diagram okay now the next question they say to us calculate the tension in the string okay so what I'm going to do is, okay, let's see if we can use, um, you know, the um, uh, uh, block A or block Q rather, okay, to calculate that acceleration, okay, I mean, uh, to calculate that tension. All right, so I'm going to say, look, if I'm looking at the forces, all right, now remember that we've got two types of forces. We've got forces that are vertical. But we have forces that are horizontal. So where is this thing uh, um, accelerating? It's accelerating horizontally. So I'm going to consider my uh, my horizontal forces. Now, just a reminder, okay? For those of you who have not watched our videos, okay, on um, Newton's laws, right? If you note that force there which is the applied force you can see it's neither horizontal nor vertical so what do we do with that force i'm going to actually draw now you you know it's not a requirement for you to do this but i just wanted to show you this so uh in this case what am i what are we going to do with that force right so we know we've got uh the force the normal force there we've got gravitational force right so this is our fg this is going to be our tension okay uh, this is going to be a frictional force so i'm going to say fk over there right but which other force do we have now the applied force so in this case instead of having that applied force i'm going to break it down into its respective components right so it has two components uh, the first one is the vertical uh, the horizontal component okay going that way but it also has the vertical component going that way, which is Fy. I'm going to call it Fy. So this is the equivalent of that applied force in the vertical. But I also have Fx, which is the equivalent of that applied force in the uh, horizontal direction. So instead of drawing force F, let me replace it with its components, which in this case will be Fx and fy is going upwards so it means that fy would actually be over there but now how would i quantify fx and fy remember haven't started uh, uh, answering that question right i'm just showing you how to work with those components right so look at that it's at 30 degrees so if you think of that as a a right angled triangle okay um right if i think of it as a right angle triangle if i'm looking for this fx component now remember i already have the hypotenuse which is my applied force and i know that that force is 200 newtons okay so i have the hypotenuse and i'm looking for the adjacent side so which trig ratio says adjacent over hypotenuse you're quite right that is going to be the cos of theta right so it means that the cos of 30 degrees will be equal to a horizontal component if you can call it f horizontal whatever you want to call it right so it's going to be fx divided by my hypotenuse which is my applied force f1 there okay 
so it means that the horizontal component uh, uh, fx is equal to f1 the course of 30 degrees okay and this uh, in this case would be all right let me just calculate it there that's 200 cos of 30. now let me just leave it uh, in that format there right so now uh, remember look i'm dragging this but i'm i'm also trying to teach you or you know because we're revising right i'm trying to show you how to answer to go about answering that question now i'm going to take the sum of forces in my horizontal dimension right so if i say f net now i'm answering question 2.3.1 uh, um, yeah 2.3.1 so this is 2.3.1 so i'm going to say f net is equal to ma that's newton's second law right so i'm going to say but what is my f net it's the sum of forces in the horizontal direction right so it's the sum of forces in the horizontal dimension this is equal to ma because my acceleration is in the horizontal dimension right now let's look at that so it means it's going to be i'm going to take the direction of motion remember you always take the direction of motion as positive so i'm going to say well what what is my uh, what are my forces it's going to be fx right that horizontal uh, um, force there minus now in this case my tension is going in the opposite direction minus the tension minus kinetic friction and this is equal to ma right now let's substitute all our values i'm just going to move this a little right so what is my x uh, fx that's going to be 200 cos 30 minus the tension right it's uh, opposing a uh, direction of motion minus they told us that the frictional force is 85 okay and this is equal to the mass we're looking at that force there i mean that mass block q which is six and what is our acceleration we were given that the acceleration is 1.5 meters per second squared right and in this case it's in the direction that we chose as positive so that must be positive 1.5 meters per second squared okay right um and all that we're going, simply going to do is determine our mathematical gymnastics so i'm going to say 200 cos 30 so i'm going to just pull out my calculator so 200 cos 30 right um so that's 200 the cos of 30 you can work it out with me um i'm going to subtract that 85 there minus 85 okay but if you think about it if i say six times 1.5 and i bring it over to this side uh, it also becomes negative so i'm going to say minus six times uh, 1.5 okay and i if you take t to the other side it becomes positive as well so i get a value for t which is tension to be 79.2 so i get a tension of 79.2 all right i hope that makes sense all right that's the value of our tension okay um so the next question says to us calculate the magnitude of the frictional force on block p right so if i look at block p which is that guy over there all right so if you don't mind i'm just going to bring this over to this side so that we can use the space on the other side now if i look at uh, block p let's look at the forces that are acting so i'm going to draw the free body diagram i know i wasn't asked to do that but i'm going to do that for the sake of um, you know seeing those forces so i know on block p what's happening that tension is the one that is causing block p to actually accelerate that way so it has tension over there but i know i also have that applied force f2 okay 
they told us that it's being pulled back back backwards right at a, at um, by 30 newton force okay but what do i also know i know that it has frictional force and that's what they're looking for isn't it so i know i'm looking for that frictional force for block p all right but uh, of course i do know that i've got my vertical forces which is the normal force as well as gravitational force all right now in this case remember we're looking for uh, the frictional force so i'm also going to say right now we're looking at um block p say f net is equals to ma but what's the sum of our forces we're taking forces that are horizontal okay it's always good to state so that we know which dimension we're working with okay is equals to ma so my, for my horizontal forces i've got the tension there right we said choose direction of motion uh, to the right as positive minus um force f2 minus okay subtract my frictional force value there okay and this is equal to mass times acceleration so um we already have the tension we said this value is 79.2 minus f2 which is 30 newtons subtract the frictional force there which is what we are looking for okay and this is equal to the mass is 3 kgs and our acceleration was positive 1.5 remember we chose to the right as positive and of course you do know how the cookie crumbles here okay so if i take fk to the other side it becomes positive um so i'm going to say 79.2 minus 30 okay and again when i take this to the other side it becomes negative as well so um, minus 3 times 1.5 okay all right and I get a value of 44.7 newtons. So it means that frictional force. Now, I know some of you might be wondering, yeah, sir, but why did you get a positive value for friction? Now, remember, this is not just the frictional force, but it's the magnitude of the frictional force. And why did I get it to be positive? Because remember, I had already okay compensated for the fact that in this case i know it is acting in that direction okay i'd i'd compensated for the direction by putting a minus there so in this case what is it just giving me it's giving me just the magnitude of that force all right ladies and gents i hope that you enjoyed that question all right and uh you shall be seeing more and more during this week okay more and more of those questions um on the mpumalanga paper all right otherwise from me for now uh please first don't forget to subscribe but i'll see you guys next time sharp sharp